sends a man down hard. Right around in front, a diving block there. Never got towards the goal. But try to pull that puck out of the Tigers' equipment. Soar sends this one in again. 20 to go here in the first. Gamecocks trying to get a late goal here. Auburn trying to even it up late. Luke Rudman in the slot. Chances materialize here for South Carolina. Pops up in the air. And now Auburn finally gets it out. Back in the other direction. Colin Tate. Backhand shot. Never got towards the net. Lower carousel and a delayed penalty on the on the play. Four slash. That will be Dominic Centraki. Centraki is not even on the ice. That's not right. Period expires. We got a one nothing lead heading into the break. They'll dish out these penalties. Uh, I guess it is Dominic Centraki who's going to go for a slash here. The Tigers will have a man advantage once we come back here for the second period. They're going to cut the ice. We will sort things out here, try to find out uh, the name and numbers of some of those unknown players for the Tigers. one nothing to score here on the Capital City Sports Network. We'll come back to you, presented by SGTV.
All right, welcome back here to the first intermission report on the Capital City Sports Network. Dylan Clark with Johnny Hartel. The Gamecocks lead 1-0 here as they battle the Auburn Tigers outdoors. The goal scorer, Bobby Van Dusen, assist coming from Cam Mecca and David Murray. It's been an eventful game at one end of the ice, not so much at the other end. Kyle Gradsky's been, he hasn't had a lot to do. No, the Gamecocks are killing time of possession, whether it's in the offensive zone, deep, not so much in the neutral zone, but even if they're on the defensive end, they'll hold it there and wait for a play to develop. Like we saw Ben Smith, you know, ran, skated up the ice. It was called an icing, you know, ultimately, but they're just waiting for plays to develop, and that's exactly what is causing them to, you know, keep the puck so much and eventually put one in and hopefully, you know, they'll be able to find the back of the net even more often in the next two periods. Gamecocks feeling confident in tonight's game after a, a difficult 7-3 loss against Georgia. Usually they'll stun a team's confidence quite a bit, but they're making those long passes. They're making some beautiful plays in the offensive zone, the hands on Dave Murray, Cam Mecca. They're not afraid to try things out, and it really that kind of experimental play, taking chances, I think that's really worked out in their favor so far in this first period as to other times when that's gotten them in trouble. Yes, and, and like we mentioned before, this is Auburn's, this is the Tigers' third game in three nights. They came out strong on the defensive end, blocking double-digit shots in the first period. And he's being tested in there in net, but Hayden Harris is doing a really good job at keeping his crease safe and his team only down one after one. Harris will have a turn at the uh, covered end of the ice down here to uh, right in front of us, the left, when uh, the camera is back in its normal spot. As we said for the uh, third period, when that does come around, the teams will switch ends halfway through it so that uh, either squad plays equal amount of time in that uh, exposed area where as we said it, it's a little darker over there once that puck goes in the corner it, it's hard to see it and I really I think that's been a big advantage for South Carolina some of those board battles where nobody can see it it's a 50-50 battle and we'll have to see if that changes things uh, once the second period rolls around we're going to step aside once more when we come back we will have the beginning of period number two here on the Capital City Sports Network presented by SGTV
All right, welcome back to the Capital City Sports Network as we get ready to go here. <laughs> Period number two from the Aikens Ford Arena at the Classic Center as I clear snow off of our game notes here. The official was kind enough to supply us with some of the ice shavings as they uh, they spent the, the last couple of minutes repairing a rut out there at center ice. And we are nice and hydrated here thanks to the uh, head official. <laughs> yes, uh, I didn't... I don't have any retaliation, so they threw two snowballs at me, and I have nothing, nothing else. Officials Thanks, two, man. broadcast crew one at the moment. <laughs> as, as a, it's really fun doing. to be down here on ice level, Dylan. Period number two underway here. The Gamecocks out to a one nothing lead. We also learned in the first intermission, number five, the unknown number five, Chris Hutter, wearing five tonight for Auburn. The backup goaltender, John Allen, sporting number seven in white this evening. Duncan Hickman rifles one back in. Around to get it, the uh, Tigers will come in friendly territory. It's Brinkman. Brinkman on the dish pass to Brown. Brown watched closely by Pizzo as he gets into the offensive zone. Brown, a nice move, shoots one and a save made there by Gratsky. Brown turns the wheels on and a nice save by Gratsky. Keeps this at the uh, one nothing pace. Point shot tipped in front, set up by Gratsky there with the left pad as it comes all the way back out. Point work there, beautiful job there by Jacob Blanding. No goals and five assists on the season, looking for his first there. Blanding the defenseman out of Decatur, Georgia. Back they come again, Auburn moving left to right in this period. Their offensive zone out under the lights. Shooting one up into the glass there, it stays in. And maybe, oh that hit the uh... <laughs> Oh, the, the storage unit outside. That hit the storage unit, not the glass. If that's, whistle, what is that, five or six now? That's five pucks out over the uh, glass. That is our official track, our official stat that we were able to keep track of. 18 and a half here in the second period. Offensive zone faceoff for the Auburn Tigers. As more ice melts on my notes. Point shot tipped in front, never got to Gratsky's then. It comes all the way back around, and Blanding's going to keep it in for Auburn. Blanding, and it can't be moved now. It comes to Ronan Egan. He's gonna try to find a, a friendly sweater. This one slapped all the way back out by Avery Pruden. Behind the goal, icing waved off as it is touched up by Hayden Harris. Harris untested so far here in the second period. Auburn with a solid clip to their pace. They've turned things around in that, uh, that first intermission. Back the other way, Weeks gives chase. Small collision there, dislodges the puck from Tyler Brinkman. And again, Auburn will regroup, start out from their own zone. Really, a much different Auburn team here to start this second period. Yeah, no, and they're really tough on the forecheck on these Gamecocks early on in the second they, period. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. That's all good. It's, it's all hard good. to hear down here. They bring it in and a shot off Kyle Gratsky's pad ends up back at the point. Disrupted down a slot shot, never got towards the net again. That one hit a Gamecock. He is down. Oakley in some distress. He's back to his feet, favoring that left skate. Around they come, near side, they'll cut up top of the circles. Point to point, Rister never got towards the goal. Off the skate of Mecca, loose in front. They've got it, a backhand save there by Gradsky. Got the left pad down as he slides from his right to his left. And now Mecca's gonna have to get it out of hostile territory. Around it comes, Gamecocks on sides, Dave Murray. Murray sends one towards the goal, backhanded by Mecca. He swatted at it there and he couldn't get a good handle on it. Murray. Down around, watched closely there by Flay. Around it comes, Soar wants that puck at the point. Still behind the goal it comes, and Frozen, another face-off thanks to Hayden Harris. And like I was saying before, the Auburn Tigers came out here, first three minutes of the period, really heavy on the forecheck, getting the puck deep in the zone, and deep in the corner trying to make plays. Gamecocks are struggling to get it out of their defensive zone as they have it in <coughs> deep. The offense is on. Walker save there by Harris. Pops back out to Powder. He can't handle it. It comes all the way back out. And unable to be held in there. Down to the ice goes Chris Hutter. Back the other way. Ryan Soar is going to get it for South Carolina. Soar. That pass for Ben Smith. Too hot to handle. Offsides. Delayed there. And then Hutter finally touches up. We will have the whistle with just a run. Uh, 16 to go in the second period. Still at 1-0, the goal by Bobby Van Dusen. 
the difference maker so far, but it's hard to believe that this game's going to stay one no one nothing for much longer. Yeah, the way that these two teams are coming out, eager to eager to get the next goal. <clears throat> really a, a once in a lifetime opportunity here to be playing outdoors in any fashion, whether it's completely outdoors or you got a little awning over you. It's really a unique experience here for for both teams. Behind the goal, Ben Smith and Ian Powderly will come around on the fourth check. Smith forces a pass, it comes back out, and again back down below. Smith and Powderly again on that fourth check, it comes around. Colin Tate trying to get it out of his own zone, it comes again below the goal line. Tate after it again. Tate trying to strip it, and it comes back to Brian Soar. He wraps that puck back in. Smith around to get it. Smith takes a heavy shoulder check there from Brinkman. Around in front, and a big save there, right on the doorstep. Corey Hawkinson looking for goal number five. Hawkinson filling in for Soar at the point. In the corner, meanwhile, they battle for the puck. Two Gamecocks and two Tigers. Hawkinson, a narrowly missed check there by Hutter. It comes down another shot. Hawkinson sends that one through the crease. Kept in by Drummond. Rolling puck settled down. Moved back down below. And Ben Smith one touches that underneath. Near side point underneath that goal strike. Centering pass would not go. The Tigers keep it down below again. Solid board play. Blanding's got it for Auburn. Escaping the glove of Brian Soren. Drifting all the way back down. Blake Drummond will pick things up here as both teams go for line changes. Soar on the chip in. Auburn on the carry back out the opposite direction. Calls the shot in the point at the slot, rather. Brown never got towards the net. Again, a point shot knocked down in front. Alex Siegfried has it for South Carolina. Leaves it, and this time it is taken by Zach Weeks. Weeks a nice feed there right towards the goal, and Harris lunges out with the stick to poke that puck into the corner. Around it comes Soar, a big hit there in the corner. Brian Soar, now he takes a hit. Auburn players taking exception to the physical play by Brian Soar. Loose puck chipped out and away, and Auburn's gonna have a two-on-one going the other direction. A delayed penalty, Auburn a chance, centering pass, and they score! Tapped home by Adam Carlson. Goal number eight on the season, and Auburn evens it up here at one apiece. And that execution on the two-on-one really, really executed <clears throat> perfectly. And you know, from from this angle, like we said, it's very hard to see. I thought that <clears throat> I thought that it was gloved by Gradsky, but it seems as if he put it top shelf, and that was really big for the Auburn bench. It took me a minute to speak because the Auburn bench was clanking their sticks on the boards. And I couldn't even hear myself talking, and now it's a one-one game with about 14 and a half minutes left in this second period. We talked about the dangers of the Gamecock defenseman pinching in as often as they do. Once in a while is okay. This time it cost them. And now the Gamecocks will be shorthanded. Duncan Hickman playing up. Uh, he pinched up on the wing there. We'll try to see who's in the box right now once we get an update. 14 minutes to go. Recently tied up at one by Auburn. And I don't have an update from the penalty box as to who is in there for South Carolina. And now a delayed penalty, whistled down. Auburn gonna be called for an interference right in front of the South Carolina bench, right in front of the official. Cam Mecca draws the penalty there, and just as quickly as Auburn goes up a man, they are right back down. We'll skate four on four for the foreseeable future. A lot more ice out there, more room, more opportunities for unique chances and different looks at the net. Gamecocks playing a lot of four-on-four four over the last few nights. In Georgia, we saw a couple. We saw at least two, maybe even three at Clemson. That, uh, that penalty-laden affair out there in Taylor, South Carolina. Meanwhile, it's taken. The Gamecocks able to hold it in briefly, though. Comes back out to the point, and Hickman rattles this one back down below. Underneath, work back out in front. A nice give-and-go there. Ronan Egan, almost a chance. This one drifts slowly in on Kyle Gradsky. He's going to shoot it over for Peters. Peters drops it around for Hickman. Hickman shovels that one around the uh, four checking Tigers. Hickman's got it again below the goal line. With Peters up, Peters receives the pass. Skates past teammate Ronan Egan. Now Peters trying to curl into the center, and he couldn't do it. Peters in after it. Doesn't know where the puck is, but he'll take the body instead. 
around South Carolina, looking back out towards the blue line. Hickman pinches down low, centering pass, loose in front, backhander there. Looks like Van Dusen. And another save there by Harris. Out again, Auburn trying to get it around, and they do around Hickman, but taken quickly again, controlled by Nick Peters. Fleet-footed Nick Peters, able to get up to Bobby Van Dusen. Certainly one of the Gamecocks' most mobile defensemen. He hops down here into the slot looking for Peters. And another centering chance. Goes back out now to Hickman. Hickman shoots one save. Off a stick in front. Harris would have been out of position there had the rebound come to a South Carolina stick as Egan regroups in the neutral zone. Peters near the South Carolina bench. Pulls up at the blue line. Sends a saucer pass over for Egan. Egan watch closely there. He puts it off the boards to himself. Ronan Egan centers for Peters, but he can't settle it down. Now it's going to be a two-on-one, maybe even three for Auburn. Back the other direction they come. Centering pass. Settles it down, and Gratsky makes a big save there. Denying Brandon Weiss of an opportunity. Back again it comes. Bobby Van Dusen. 12-12 to go in the second period. Another delayed call as this puck goes into the corner. Touched up by the Tigers' Clinton Fleming. And another penalty with around 12 minutes to go here in the second period. It will be four on three as Andrew Haggerty gets taken into the penalty box for a slashing minor. Now let's see with, with this four on three if the Gamecocks are able to, oh, it looks like it's a five on three now. Gamecocks penalty over, it's now five on three for a few short seconds until Auburn's first penalty is killed off. Let's see if the Gamecocks can execute with two men up. As that man right back off until the player rejoins the play. It's technically a five on three. Is now rejoining the play from the bench. Gamecocks still a man up. Soar can't handle that pass. He's going to be taking a task there right along that far side wall and drifting all the way back in. Corey Hawkinson's going to have to regroup it for South Carolina. Hawkinson on the power play. He races ahead. Corey Hawkinson with long strides over the blue line. Bodies a man there, still has the puck. Able to take a man right into the glass that Hawkinson still looking for it. Digs it out of his skates. Now comes all the way back out to the point. Walks, distributes to Brian Soar. Soar throws it down low, can't be settled down there. Another shot upstairs, he scores! Up and over the shoulder of Hayden Harris. The goal scorer, Ian Powderly, his second goal in as many games. It's a power play goal, and the Gamecocks go up 2-1. to one. And that was set up first by the d to d pass to Brian Soar. Brian Soar sees Ian Powderly down in the corner, finds him on a nice touch pass. Powderly just hits it up and over Harris's glove side shoulder, make this game 2-1. <laughs> that is just about as nice of a power play goal as you can draw up the d to d pass. Soar with the vision to see Ian Powderly down. Well, fortunately for Powderly, he was able to settle that puck down in time. A bouncer didn't look like he was going to be able to get the shot off. Harris drops down low, Powderly goes up high, and the Gamecocks take a 2-1 lead with 11-11 to go here in the second period. We approach the halfway point in this game as Brown for Auburn trying to make up that goal. Still in front it goes, and now the Gamecocks move back again right to left. A nice move there by Dylan. Jacob poked into the corner. Jacob still without a point for South Carolina. One of three such players, Blake Drummond and Zach Weeks being the others who still look for their first point this season. Defensively stifled there are the Auburn Tigers and Powderly. <laughs> Ian Powderly, <laughs> or no, it should be Zach Weeks, 27 rather than seven. Weeks gonna go to the box for a slashing minor and the Tigers will go up a man here, just under 10 to go. It seems as if these two teams are trading penalties early on in these first 10 minutes of the second period. Really been the story of the whole season for South Carolina. Regardless of who they play, they are disciplined early on, and then it just takes uh, a little bit of, of familiarity to allow them to start taking liberties and start taking penalties with the other team. You know, a little, uh, little chip, a little shove here becomes cross checks to the face and whacks across the hands, and all of a sudden you are one or two men down. Nice sky clear there by Brian Soar as we see the f in the penalty box. Up around it comes the Tigers, cannot hold it in, and streaking ahead is Cam Mecca shorthanded. Mecca tries to center a pass there, he had one man breaking towards the goal. Van Dusen a shot, it goes off the glove there of Harris. 
Van Dusen didn't look like he was even going to get to that puck. As now Auburn going to have to regroup here on the power play. Mecca and Van Dusen, explosive out there, creating shorthanded havoc as Auburn will try to get things going ahead at their own blue line. Watch their keys on shorthand, and now it comes. No icing, no offsides. It comes back in, and Duncan Hickman's going to take over for the Gamecocks. Hickman tries a center one, an ill-advised stretch pass, and now we got Tigers running into each other. Back the other way comes South Carolina. It's Corey or Bobby Van Dusen. Brown regroups again, working the point on the power play. And now one handed up ahead to Carlson. Carlson's got the lone goal for Auburn. He's looking for a second in the corner, walks by Hickman. It'll come back and around. Under the skates of the official, back out to the point. Long shot, never got towards the goal. Into the corner. Again, point to point they go. Rister, again blocked in front by Luke Rudman. As big as Clinton Fleming is, you'd think he'd uh, get some harder shots towards the goal. He elects to go with the wrist shot more often than the big slapper. At some point, I imagine, we'll get to see him wind one up and really send it towards the goal. As Duncan Hickman takes over. The Gamecocks back at even strength here. They kill off the penalty, eight and a half to go, a 2-1 hockey game. In front of the Tigers net, they control back out. Hickman's gonna have to get it for South Carolina. It comes all the way back. Icing waved off, Hickman's gonna get it. But they'll make him battle for it. Hickman and now more bumps down low for Nick Peters. Comes around where it can be taken by Luke Rudman. Rudman around, tries to get through three or four players. Nick Pizzo shoots it back in, and both of them head towards the bench. Around the Tigers, clad in white this evening. Gamecock still waiting on the arrival of those uh, brand new white jerseys, and now this puck comes around its center. Back in the other direction. Harriso shoots one off the skates of Brian Stone. Harriso gets it back, and into the corner now it comes. Steve Bangleshot pops out in front, awkwardly, and just past the reach there. Too far for Chris Moretzky. Around and back in. Seven and a half to go. Incox recently killing off a large power play. Avery Pruden wrists it back around and Tigers hold it in until Blake Drummond gets control. Off a stick, Drummond chipping in. Now Dylan Jacob gonna be the uh, lone pressurer for the Gamecocks. As Lowe Carousel brings it back for Auburn and the Gamecocks again take over in their own zone. No one able to get stable footing here in the second period. As we go end to end, oftentimes not even seeing a shot on goal. Past the halfway point of this second period and therefore past the halfway point of this hockey game. An outdoor experience here for the Gamecocks. Bringing it back ahead now, Auburn a shot. Off the stick there, Steve Verone gonna have to try a little harder to beat Kyle Gradsky that time. Back around, watch closely and wristing that one off the glass. Flip back around. The Gamecocks will take over from center. Ian Powderly bumped off the puck there. Muscle, really. And now Powderly sends a man down. He gets it back. Powderly's going to take more hits. The puck loose in the slot area. Comes back out to the point. A long shot. Hits uh, Powderly in front. Powderly, no worse for wear. He's still got the puck. Sends it back to this point man. Centracchio wrists it wide. Into the corner. It's Smith. He's going to have some help from Powderly. Powderly wants Centracchio. Walks it back to the blue line. Sends it down low. Off the stick there. Broken up nicely. And into the corner off the stick of Thomas Moore. Moore and Soar. Powderly still battling for South Carolina. Kept in by Centracchia. He'll let one go past the glove and sliding pad of Hayden Harris. Auburn with a chance the other direction. They will gain the red line and not flip it in. This time coming away is Bill Robinson. Shoots one, saved by Gratsky. Robinson's got it again. Spinning away from a check there of Brian Soar. Underneath they bring it. Hawkinson gonna try to keep it below the goal line. Soar gonna try to sky pass one here. Yes, indeed. Soar likes to go to the air. Was it tipped in front? Mecca is gonna get to it first. Centering pass, never got to the stick of Bobby Van Dusen. Auburn regroups again. Five to go here. Second period of action from Athens, Georgia. Now it's gonna be a chance for Murray. Murray shoots one, save made by Harris in the rebound. Batted out of the air by goaltender Hayden Harris as he recontrols his posts. And again, it's Dave Murray. Not done yet. Centering pass again. Harris may have shut that one down again. Once more, Dave Murray with Centracchio backskating. Flipped into the slot. Popped in front. 
and smothered on that Auburn word mark by Hayden Harris with 4.34 to go here in this second period. Harris gets another stoppage of play and a breather for an undoubtedly tired Tigers squad. <clears throat> yes, it seems as if it went about five, six minutes without a stoppage of play right there, straight through. Lions must be very tired and you know, great work by Harris there in his own crease. Now we gotta change the line of both teams. Fresh legs, always good. Harris with the calm and patient demeanor that is so crucial for goaltender. He's faced a high velocity of shots, only two have beaten him so far. As now this point shot kicked out by Harris again and the rebound cleared out, that's all you can ask. The goaltender makes the first save, your defense will clear the puck out, Auburn exercising uh, that anecdote well. Around it comes in front, a jam play in front, can't get to the goal, loose in front. The official whistles this play down as we will have a penalty perhaps. We'll get this one sorted out, four and a half to go in the second. The net apparently knocked off. We had a couple of Gamecocks headed towards the goal here with speed. Harris and the official gonna try to get this net back on its moorings. It Talk is indeed cold, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little cold. We talked about, um, aside from the temperature, we talked about the high number of penalties. It is important to know that Adam Carlson, alternate captain for Auburn, also the team leader in penalty minutes, 48 of them in just 15 games played. As around it comes again, Gamecocks held in there by Nick Pizzo. Wristed back around and Luke Rudman's gonna get it. Around they will battle for it. It comes back out, Drummond curls into the slot, shoots one and easily directed into the corner with the pad of Harris. Drummond as far as center, he'll backskate and move this one back up to a friendly sweater. He'll try to knock it through and he'll have to bring it out of the skates. It's kicked up to the stick of Ronan Egan. Egan, centering pass, never got towards the net. Around again, Rudman riding that uh, face-off circle. Back down low, they center almost off a skate there. And now another stoppage in play. We'll wait to get this one sorted out. The net off its moorings again. They'll take a look. They're having a lot of trouble keeping that net on. It's when we are outside in such conditions, it's, it's not uncommon to see the ice uh, give the players some problems. We saw that right at the beginning of the period, the officials spent a considerable amount of time with the puck and uh, trying to get some loose snow to cover up a divot at center ice. I wouldn't be surprised if that is a similar case right around that goal post. They got the pegs that go into the ice. Wouldn't be surprised if it chips some of the ice away and uh, keeping, it, keeping the net off its moorings, making it difficult to secure it. As Duncan Hickman shoots this one back in explosively right in front of our camera crews. And this puck recycled back in by Auburn. Hickman's back to get it. Hickman absorbs some contact, he goes down. And now a chance out of the corner for Auburn. They move it around. Decent opportunity, they'll have to regroup Blanding from his own zone. Blanding fans on that attempt was watched closely there by Corey Hawkinson. 3.17 to go in the second. Gamecocks with a 2-1 lead. Powderly out of the corner, a shot right off the mask of Harris. And Harris, got to have a few bells ringing in his head right now. That is not a slow shot by Ian Powder. They got one of the quickest releases on the team. We saw it in his back bar shot in and out of the net the other night against the Dogs. He teams up with Ben Smith. Now Smith trying to get it free. Powderly in front, goes to the backhand, shoots one, and he scores! Ian Powderly drags it around the goaltender. Harris shows extreme patience and puts the Gamecocks up to a 3-1 lead, his second of the night. And that was great use of the loose puck there by Powderly, taking it in the slot, going <coughs> backhand, forehand, and ultimately beating Harris, who he seemed to have put flat on the ice because he had no idea where Powderly was going with that puck. And Powderly went exactly where he wanted to go with it, and that was to the back. A lot of players, especially the younger and less experienced players, would have seen, oh, I got a chance in the slot, I got to get this puck off my tape and into the back of the net. Powderly, an experienced veteran, now with eight goals on the season, knew that he had time, he waited for Harris to commit to the save, and he just dragged that puck around him and slides it into the back of the net. And his team now has a 3-1 lead. Tyler Oakley with two and a half to go in the second. 
in this outdoor classic. Gamecocks moving back ahead, another shot kicked out of that slot area by Harris. A little slower to get up. Got to wonder if the puck off the head of Harris just moments before that uh, Gamecock goal went in. Wonder if that affected his, uh, his play at all. Underneath, they joust for it. That goal by South Carolina seemed to be a catalyst here for both teams. It picked up the pace here. Brown back ahead for Auburn. He's got a trailer. Brown pulls up, gives it to another man, and right off the tape there. Big chance for Adam Carlson. In the corner, and drifts. As Dylan Jacob sent down. Far side chance for Brown, went by the wayside. Shipped all the way back out, delayed icing. The goaltender comes out to play it, icing is negated. Kicked in and held by South Carolina, Dave Murray. And now it's whistled down. We'll see what the call is. A minute 41 to go here in period number two. A 3-1 hockey game. And we'll wait to see here what the stoppage in play is for. Officials trying to explain it to the penalty box and both coaches all at the same time. Yes, very hard for us to pick up to pick up the signals as I can, well. I can barely hear you talking one at, at some times, and there's no way I'm gonna hear what's talking. It looks like Alex <laughs> Siegfried's gonna see. Siegfried's gonna sit for a pair. His penalty will take the remainder of period number two. And barring any goals here from Auburn, it will carry over into the third. We have another whistle and another stoppage of play. Looks like a timeout has been called. Alan Serwa unsure, and a timeout is called here with 1.42 to go, 1.41 in period number two. Uh, this is a great opportunity for Coach Rux to draw up some face-off plays, maybe make adjustments <laughs> line-wise, line change-wise. And, I mean, Hayden Harris is, yes, he's let three goals by him, but he could have let a lot more. He's keeping his team in the game right now, and also with the D men blocking shots like they've been doing all night. It's just been, you know, a really defensive game for Auburn, as well as the two teams have upped their physicality in the second period. You know, open ice hits, on the board hits, you name it. They're they're hits left and right. Apart from the physicality, Hayden Harris, we've talked about him so much tonight. He got, as we said, that calm demeanor, not unlike. And Carey Price or a Henrik Lundqvist, the more experienced goaltenders in the NHL and in any league, really, for that matter. They know when to keep their composure and they know how to do it and do it effectively. And Harris has done an exemplary job seeing through all kinds of traffic, taking contact, a couple of players crashing into his net. But a lot of external factors that Harris can't control. And he's done a solid job of controlling them through these first two periods. And at the other end, Gratsky, untested. Well, not untested. Tested not as much as Harris. And Gratsky's kept his head and his wits about him as well. You see long stretches. You go two, three minutes without a shot. Some goaltenders would fall asleep back there. Not Kyle Gradsky. Not tonight. As we get ready for the faceoff, we'll take a look ahead here. Gamecocks, two games against Kennesaw State next weekend. That is February 1st and 2nd. Both those games at the Plex. Looking ahead for Auburn as they'll try to get one away from a Gamecock defender here. On the four check, they'll bring it back out. Next game for Auburn will be the SEC tournament. They are off next week. A maintenance day for them. And now a backhander save there by Gratsky. The rebound catches the glass in behind the goal. A lot of Gamecock players taking maintenance days now. It's going to be a maintenance week here for Auburn. Now back to the point. They come a shot. Tipped in front. Ends up in the corner. Around again. Gamecocks. Slow on the pace here, shorthanded. The power play for Auburn. As we approach one minute remaining in the period. Loose in front, shorthanded. Gamecocks possibly a two on one. Far side shot, rebound directed into the corner. Off the pad of Harris there. Centracchio getting it back into play for South Carolina. One of the defensemen on. Auburn wrists it around. Brian Soar back to get it playing those top power play and penalty kill minutes. Ryan Soar, a top pair defenseman here for many years now. The senior out of New York. It's going to be a very different Gamecock team once he is gone. Good for him that he's going to get a, uh, an opportunity to play outdoors here. As this shot goes up into the glass and behind the goal. Again it comes. Back down low. Soar is going to get it. Tipped all the way back out. It bounces awkwardly there into the Auburn bench. 
officials will have to make sure that didn't hit the uh, oncoming Auburn player. As if it did hit that man as he comes off the board boards and the sixth player didn't have both his skates on the bench. They could have given Auburn a uh, penalty there for too many men on the ice. But it appears that nothing doing there. Gamecocks will remain shorthanded for the final seconds here of period number two. Faceoff ends up in South Carolina territory. Wristed back out. They'll keep it as far as the red line. Gloved down by Blake Drummond. They'll go to D to D. And we will go to the second intermission here. The Gamecocks with a 3-1 lead here in Athens, Georgia. We're going to step aside and we will try to get perhaps a player interview in the next few minutes while they resurface the ice. When we come back, it will be that intermission interview here on the Capital City Sports Network presented by SGTV.
Welcome back and welcome to the second intermission report here at the at the Atkins Center, Atkins Ford Arena, excuse me, at the Classic Center here in Athens, Georgia. And Dylan is now ice level with goaltender Kyle Gradsky. Dylan? All right, I'm down here at ice level with Gamecocks goaltender Kyle Gradsky. Kyle, a very, very unique situation out here. Have you ever played outdoors in anything like this before? Uh, yeah, I have, but um, this, mic, this, this ice is not exactly what I expect. It's a little soft in the crease. Um, nothing or not, nothing I'm not used to. We have plenty of these rings up north. Um, so, you know, nothing, nothing's really changing about my game. Just a little bit, you know, soft ice for the most part. That's all I'm really worried about. You talked about the way this rink is set up. You got a roof on this half. There's nothing over there. Does that make a difference for you and Net going from that end to this end and then back down there? I mean, it was a little intimidating being on the lighter end here, looking down over there. It looked pretty dark, but uh, as soon as I got down there, it wasn't too bad. I just adjust to it. So, I mean, I'd be, I'd be more worried if I was a defenseman going back and forth in and out of the and of the dark zone, so like it's not too bad playing down there for the most part. It's a lot, lot easier than I expected. Puck's been down at the other end for a lot of this game, but when it's come back down towards you, you've been ready. How do you keep yourself in the game and mentally focused when you don't see a shot for two or three minutes at a time? Uh, yeah, for the most part, you just got to kind of keep your head in the head in the play, even when, you know, no matter where the puck is on the ice. So just coming out to the hash marks, you know, looking at the puck, even if it's in the, you know, it's in the offensive zone, um, tracking it through the neutral zone, moving around the pucks in the neutral zone, keeping your legs warm. And um, that's just stuff that, as you play over the years, like you try to figure that out because you eventually have to play in games like these where you don't take shots for a certain amount of time. And um, it can be it can be really tough, but today it hasn't been a problem, thankfully. All right, thanks, Kyle. That'll do it for us here on the second intermission. When we come back, we will have period number three on the Capital City Sports Network, presented by SGTV.
Welcome back to the Capital City Sports Network as we are just about to get underway here on the third period of this outdoor game between Auburn and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Goals scored so far, three for the Gamecocks, one for Auburn. Auburn's goal come up, let's take it to Adam Carlson, two for Ian Powderly of South Carolina, and one as this puck is rifled back in, one for Bobby Van Dusen. Now a stretch pass all the way ahead for Cam Mecca, out of nowhere, Mecca to the backhand. Oh, and what a glove save there by Harris. Oh, or maybe not. All right, is that uh, a goal? No, that's in the back of the that net, that's goal. a goal. My goodness. Harris, Harris finished that off like he had that puck in his glove. Yeah, he, that's was, a, <laughs> he, fooled, he fooled me. That's a goal. 